guys? It's Doug from Sneaker Smart Customs um, <clears throat> with another project that we're going to be doing. I wanted to show another how-to video. I got the uh, <clears throat> Reverse Concord 11 Low or whatever you guys want to call them, Tuxedo 11 Lows. Customer just sent these in about a week ago um, and wants them completely um, blacked out. So what we're going to do is we're going to black out the midsole and the patent leather area. Uh, this particular customer had asked to leave the sole icy. Um, however, you know, for a true blackout, we would obviously black out the whole thing, but what the customer wants, uh, we will do. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take the patent leather, completely dye it black, midsole, completely dye it black, let it dry, and then we will apply a flat back, a flat black, um, coating about three to four coats. And we're really going to dull it out and give it a really flat look. Uh, and then when we're done, everything is dried up. We'll give it the matte black, the uh, matte finisher, the Angelus matte finisher, and uh, give it a nice smooth, um, completely flat black look. We want to remove all of the shine um, off of the patent leather. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first prep the shoe, uh, which basically would be obviously to remove the shoelaces. Um, I use acetone and um, leather the glazer. This is the Angelus Leather Deglazer that I use. Um, all of the supplies that I show you in all my videos are going to be specifically uh, given to me from TurtleFeathers.net. Um, that's my sponsor. In case you did not know, I'm one of the pro team members there um, sponsored. So all of the uh, materials that you see in all my videos uh, are directly sent from uh, them to me. And they're really great, uh, great customer service, great website, great people to deal with. So. Um, for all of your custom needs, I would definitely recommend using them, and uh, all of the information will be available to you um, in the description of this video. So, we'll begin prepping. So, let's uh, go ahead and we're going to use some of the glazer uh, and also some acetone, and we'll begin taping off, and <clears throat> that'll be that. So, right after we do that, we'll start applying some dye. Life for a dollar, homie, nah, I don't think so. Greed, breeze, jealous niggas out here when we in info. Catching niggas slipping, pulling a bullet in his tempo. Oh, me, it's the same rules. Money talks simple. My kill folk call it what I'm living like the high life. Oh, me, if he knew what I had to do to keep my mind right. I, I tell you, I got 20 20 hindsight. See it in the distance. Hieroglyphics. Guys, yesterday we were able to go ahead and prep these 11 lows uh, that we began working on. So we went ahead and taped the obviously the upper and the sole of the shoe because we're going to be laying our dye on the patent leather and the midsole. Um, this item has been prepped with about four coats of Bulldog Adhesion Promoter, which I use on all of my customs really since I've, uh, you know, began doing this. A little bit of research led me right to that product, which is a phenomenal product as far as um, using it on various different materials, which will really help your paint and your dye adhere to your custom. So definitely look to invest in that. If you don't have it, you can pick it up at turtlefeathers.net. Um, they do have it in stock now, and you do get it fairly quickly. They are very quick with their shipment, so definitely something you want to look into. Uh, we're going to start dyeing this item, uh, this custom shoe, right away. The base coat will be about three to four coats of dye. We're going to be using the Angelus uh, leather dye as the base coat before we put our matte black on top. So what we're going to do is we'll shake this up really, really nice to get a good mix. Um, and then when using dye, obviously remember it's super permanent, so be careful with it. Um, what you want to do is not use very much, um, whether you're painting uh, with a brush or using your airbrush. I will be using my airbrush because I use it for most applications. Um, you want to really be very, very light with the amount. I'm only going to use about five to six drops. Um, that will cover uh, one coat for each shoe. So very, very minimal. These bottles should last you a long time. Um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a coat and let it dry, and then I'll show you uh, what you should do after the item dries um, in between coats. Uh, wake up feeling blessed, uh, piss you on that dresser. Uh, ain't afraid to show it, I'll expose it if I dress up. Yeah. Riding in that tester, uh, one coat of dye onto the 11 low. Uh, I had let it dry for about 20 minutes. And um, what I wanted to show you guys is that in between coats, what I like to do is I like to take a napkin or a rag, whatever you have, um, and basically just wipe over the dyed areas. And what this is going to do, this is going to remove any of that residual dye that doesn't um, adhere to the coating, to that initial coating that you're doing. So um, if you're going to do three or four coats, you want to do this in between every coat. So your first coat, let it dry for 15 minutes. Uh, give it a quick wipe down uh, just to remove all the, re re uh, the residual dye 
um, that's there. And as you can see, some of it's coming off onto uh, the napkin that I'm using. And that's a good thing because we want to remove that um, material that, you know, didn't absorb into, um, into the patent leather and into the midsole. So you definitely want to do this in between each coat. Uh, and this would help the adhesion overall and also helps to keep an even, um, an even look onto, um, onto the custom. So I'm going to continue doing this, um, and then I'm going to do about three or four more coats before I start to do my paint. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys the difference um, after you dye the item and after you paint the custom sneaker. I have one that has been dyed, um, as you saw previously in the video, and then I laid um, two coats of the matte black, uh, flat black mixture that I had mixed um, using the Angelus Duller and the Angelus Flat Black paint. So as you can see here, the, the dye here um, came out very well. You know, it's very permanent. It absorbs well onto the patent leather and into the midsole, but it still has a bit of that shine to it um, because it really isn't a flat type uh, dye. It's a regular black dye. So this is what it looks like from the perspective of just being dyed. And I let these dry overnight. And the other shoe is the flat black. So as you can tell, a big difference um, after you start laying the paint. And this is where the custom really starts to come to life because you're laying that flat black mixture over the dye. Um, and it really kind of removes all of that shine that comes on the factory patent leather. And gives the real good appearance of a completely blacked out custom. And this is precisely what the customer wanted. So I'm actually really pleased with the look of it. Um, I'm trying to get better light for you guys, but you can see definitely a big, big difference with the flat on top of the die. So, so far I'm really happy about how this is coming out. And so here I'm beginning my touch-ups using the elbow brush that I get from turtlefeathers.net. Uh, this is really helpful with small areas that need additional paint. And as you can see here, the top part of the patent leather, where it attaches to the upper, is sometimes difficult to get when airbrushing because of how you tape. So I'm going to go ahead and use this elbow brush to finish up my touch-ups. The next part of the custom process is, is to apply the finisher for protection. For this custom, I'm using the matte Angelus finisher, as seen here in the picture. And I'm going to apply three to four thin coats. So here we have some finished pictures of the product. So as you can tell, the black came out very flat with a great matte finish. It's precisely what the customer wanted. Here's a little info. You should know.